A very warm welcome to all. This is Sudarshana from the Gindi Times, the official campus magazine, CGAC Tech and Sat. Palette series is an initiative by the Gindi Times to connect with artists and designers to provide insights about this field for budding artists and designers out there. Today, we are joined by a very hardworking and talented artist, the creator of Tamil typography. He's not just a lettering artist, but also a type designer and font engineer. Interesting, right? We'll get to know what the differences are from him today. He has created various Tamil fonts like Nadal, Kavivana, and which have been used in various products and lyrical videos. He believes that lettering can evoke emotions and constantly explores various styles. And his Instagram page is a total motivation for all of us. His curiosity to learn and explore every day with love and passion for Tamil is an inspiration for all of us. I'm immensely pleased in welcoming you, sir. So our guest is none other than Tariq Aziz. Welcome, sir. Wanakam, sir. Wanakam. Well, uh, thank you for your introduction. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad to be here for the yeah. Yes. Okay, sir. So, with no further delay, we'll move on to the question, sir. Sir, you Tamil and lettering are in the art. How are you going to share the pioneer? Yeah, the, uh, like, uh, so, the way we going to go with the Tamil or English? Tamil is okay, like, fine, sir. Whichever company. Oh, yeah. That's, so, basically, uh, I... So, in my childhood, since my childhood, I really uh, start to do with, like, you know, I always scribble things and stuff, but in school days, I when I look at my uh, notebooks, I feel like I've been scribbling a lot of areas. But later on in the life, I, I wanted to, the focus was very, uh, very narrow because of I when I started to see in the uh, books or the covers of books, I felt like they are all look the same. And I, I really want to change that because, you know, I believe that uh, the type can evoke emotion, as you said, and also, you know, if you you can't ignore type, right? Whenever you see, if you see just there, there's a calendar, then there's a type, right? The type is everywhere. You can't. So that's kind of thing. I, I motivated me to say, okay, maybe I'm. I don't want to complain about it, about the the availability of limited uh, availability of the fonts in Tamil. While what I can do is I can create a lot of fonts or a lot of letterings, a lot of different types of shapes for Tamil. So, uh, and this actually came because of the inspiration given by my dad because he actually used to bring a lot of books whenever he goes to business purposes to different places. He actually always, always remember to bring a lot of books. And where I see in 60s, 70s, 80s book, covers are very phenomenally designed and hand lettered. And that is missing right now. They all being digitized, where they have limited font, uh, whether it is can be a, a non-fiction or fiction or maybe an anthology. What they do is it, they use the same form and you don't really feel exactly what is actually happening. So that's why I thought, okay, just not to complain, but to create. And that's where I started from 2013, I believe. From there, I, uh, I started to say, okay, I want to create one letter at a time. Then we'll see how things go. So, you know, when you create something, it's actually something like, if you want to create something, it has to be combined with two things. One is enjoyment, and the other thing is remaining consistent, right? So I thought those can be a part of it and the byproducts can be fame, money and everything. That's a different story. But when you can focus on something that you really enjoy and keep on consistent and that made this uh, part a kind of a, a, a kind of a kind of road. I would want to make it happen. Yeah. Well, that was so much true. Like we should not complain, but get into action. That is really true. So it's what you told. So, okay, so can you share any of your favorite Tamil book, any two or three books which you like? Yeah, the thing is, uh, like, um, I, I remember that when I when I talk about this uh, uh, earlier on 70s, 60s and 80s book, where you feel a lot of uh, richness in typography and stuff. 
I remember there is a publication called Mani Mehale Pesaro. The other one is Mulle uh, Nile. Uh, Those people are actually having a lot of nicer looking covers. And I have no idea who is the artist behind it because there's no um, uh, credit for that in the books itself. They just printed it and put it there. And I remember there's a book called Nannu, which is a, um, it's a, a grammar book in Tamil, but they have their version of from Mulle Nile. They have this kind of patterns and a lot of and uh, uh, kind of uh, different types of lettering in there. So I really liked it and that was a kind of a, a favorite uh, thing for me when it comes to the only one. But uh, these days I couldn't find any, not favorite in the sense, I like it anyway, but you know, I see the typography a monotony. You see everything as same as it is. So you can't choose it, right? It's everything the same. So if you like it, you like everything. So <laughs> I just didn't do that yet. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, okay. Before you get into any work, like uh, you're gonna create any work, can you explain the process from start to end? How do uh, how do you work on it? Ah, uh, yeah. So, so there are a couple of things that we can say uh, when it comes to work. The work itself, say sometimes you work for the client. Let's like, say they have a specific problem to solve. So when it comes to a client project, I of course I, I actually wanted to look for what are the problem they have and I need to solve the problem that but there's another way another project that we call self-initiated which I focus on for my peer uh, experimentation and also the uh, uh, love for the lettering you know so if you look at my Instagram where I letter a lot of uh, lyrical uh, verses from Tamil songs where I think so let's say if a client comes to with the different uh, creative brief, I go through them and find what I need to really do it and do that, right? But the process is the same for each and everything, but the things that we are uh, looking at is different, right? So let me quickly go through that process. So if I want to have uh, lyrics uh, to be lettered, so I go through the words first. Let's say, uh, like, uh, say, Okay, so let's say Munbeva, uh, Enanbeva, whatever, right? So there is a word, but you have to find how can you emphasize this uh, meaning on it, right? You can just write it as you really want, but again, you can evoke emotions and the meaning. So uh, you want to so find out some kind of uh, uh, like steps, let's say sketching different types of things. So I started to do a lot of sketching things all the time. So when I start to do the sketching, it's still, uh, I feel like, oh, this direction can be good for this. So I'll stop there and I'll refine the sketch. Then I think, oh, maybe we can do some flourishes, which can have kind of, it's talk about the, the lyrics itself, talking about love and stuff, right? So connecting together, it's kind of making more sense. So I'll try to write, okay, maybe we can put some flourishes. And if there is an opportunity for the ligature, so ligature in the sense, two different letters combined together and form a different one, but again, we can still read it, right? So that's, I, I, I look for that. If that I, I can find those kind of things, I'll uh, reiterate it and iterate on so on and so forth. And, and I'll, I'll come up with the, uh, the sketch, like refined sketch. From there, uh, I will be able to create the piece, like uh, drawing the, like making a digitized version. Let's say I capture it on my phone and transfer it to uh, my computer and change the colors and stuff. That's how it actually works. So the process is the same, but it's, uh, I always take a lot of time to come up with the direction. So I used to <coughs> sketch a lot of things like, you know, I, I, I have a sketchbook where I really don't want to uh, stay for the same time to create the artwork. I explore different types of things. When I start to do the artwork, those kind of practices come as a helpful uh, uh, way to get involved that and I can actually combine together or incorporate those kind of letter forms 
right here. So the practice is already made, right? So those are the, that's the kind of a practice or the process that I follow in, in terms of things here. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, so you have lettered many Tamil letters like a, uh, a, ka and ana ka. Which letter did you find to be very difficult? Yeah, when it comes to <coughs> lettering, lettering in the sense. So let's say. Uh, so I quickly give you a kind of a uh, kind of a uh, I mean the outline. So the lettering is about art of drawing letters. So the typography is about art of using letters and the calligraphy is all about art of writing letters. So when when it's writing, we can actually write something, right? But the drawing it's different. So the lettering. Lettering in the sense, let's say I want to go with the directions to evoke this kind of emotion. So I want to find that out, right? So it actually depends on what are the things that really want to do with this uh, lettering, right? So, but the most difficult, not the most difficult, always I struggle to get the balance for this uh, letter Ina. We have, because they have a lot of, uh, like there are a lot of things going on, you know. It actually has a kind of uh, uh, part of the Ana and uh, some other things that there's a descent and extender is there and also there's a kind of a descent that's going on so there, there are kind of things uh it's not difficult but i feel like okay i, I always find hard to balance all together because there has to be a symmetrical balance to there right so that will that is the kind of a letter that i can say for this actually question yeah. okay, sir. okay sir. so i will uh, share my screen to show one of your works and i'll ask you one question regarding that sir Sure. Okay, so can you see the screen, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. So this was one of your recent works, and in the caption you had mentioned, "Kuda yondre yendi kondu, Kumari yondre narakirala." So you had personified this Tamil year, sir. So can you tell what is going on your mind while creating this? Like, was it intentional to personify this Tamil yeah. character? Yeah. So yeah, so I uh, I always uh, explore things, right? So uh, so this is the Bursier curve that we say when, when it comes to type design, you type like uh, you do draw each and every anchor points and make it these vector things. So when I was start to experiment those kind of things, I felt like okay, maybe we can move these uh, like the anchor points a little bit and see what is going to happen. They're like oh. This is getting interesting. All right, let's do this. So I started to uh, change this way of doing this, and also I didn't expect the 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 pulley, you know, the the cap and everything was not there. It was this the satana. Then I thought, okay, maybe that the part is actually resembles the umbrella. So what I can do is I can just put a hat for that, and maybe let's say how it turns out. So it's kind of an um, like a, like experimentation, like you know taking that experimentation and say, oh, this is good. Maybe we can do that. And people actually, in the comment section, you can see a lot of people have different interpretation. And even they have a, a poetic interpretation for that as well. So it's a kind of interesting thing, yeah. Yes. It's a kind of a happy ending, yeah, yeah maybe. Um, uh, one more, I'll screenshot another one. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, can you tell us about how did you create this uh, lettering portrait? Like, what are the verses you have written? And and one more yeah, thing, sir. How so, did you feel when uh, Rahman sir posted it in his Instagram handle, sir? How was it moment? Ah, uh, yeah. So the that was really like uh, euphoria. You know, it's very like pleased, and I am really ex excited, and even I'm very happy about it. And I I, I remember that I. Uh, I, I, like I was telling everyone, you know, it, it, it was kind of a moment that you can't miss it. It's a lifetime uh, moment. So it was a great experience for me. Yeah, it was fantastic. And they, this is the second one, uh, Thomas uh, uh, posted. The first one was the another one, which is resembling his face on the things, uh, uh, which I talk, uh, I written the ore ore kana unvarvile. Are they, uh, that, that's the lyric is there. But this one is uh, the the particular this uh, artwork. It consists of all the lyrics, uh, the songs uh, it's been sung by Arama itself. Like you know, uh, there is a Parvat uh, 
la the that, that that song is there. and also uh, there are a lot of songs that he himself uh, sung on on the on the thing. so i started to explore those kind of lyrics and put together and i have written all these lyrics in a one sheet of paper and i scanned it and i i made sure that there is a, sometimes you know when you write a letter or even when you write something you some you will make some mistakes right so i really wanted to retain that mistake even it itself into the thing to make it kind of a antique look and also uh, like you know if you can look at closer you can see that said uh, there are some smudges and stuff so that kind of thing i wanted to retain that say to be more or authentic one to sort of say so yeah so it was a kind of a nice experience for me yeah that, that was a kind of a thing that i really wanted to personate with that uh, piece yeah really a uh, dream come true moment <laughs> it is so so ninge ipo nariya workshops conduct pandringa sir like uh, what do you uh, want to teach your students like you, you have been conducting a uh, cohort based workshops called vari tamil so what do you want to reach to the students through our workshops uh, aya yeah. the workshop the vari tamil workshop it's always focusing on making people to be a creator in the domain okay so the varai tamil itself uh, resonate the actual way of drawing letters right so we are going to draw tamil letters so that's why uh, the the thing called what varai means that if you really want to uh, succeed let's say <clears throat> to want to create you have to have a system you have to have a system to create create more so how do you create more means you have to focus on say i want to spend this amount of time each day for this thing so how do you do that so that i teach that okay you can have a system on this and do that and i want to uh, take another one as well as talking about their taste and the skill i tell i i want to tell them that let's say if you really want to create something you can create right now but sometimes you think about something that you can create but when you start to create you don't feel the same as the thing that you have in your mind is not replicated in your work you feel like oh my god I thought I can do it but I can't do it right now. So that's because your taste is superior than your skill. So I in my workshop I always tell them if we can practice your way to enhance your skills you'll be able to beat the taste. When you beat the taste with your skill you will be able to create anything you imagine in your head. so that's what i really wanted to say so if i if i wanted to reach it in picking tamil which is like or 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 pudhiya or vishayam unna nam seiyanumna nammude rasane irukkudha nam rasane endru vande eppodume irukku alaga irukku appo nam onde nam thodangi seiyanum appadi engra veere che thodanginumna adha seiyi mudichona paathume nam ninaitha maari vandiruka appo idu ninaitha maari yen varale appadi engra oru mugapiri oru ஏமாற்றம் வந்திருக்கும் சில நேரங்களில் இது வரலையே என்று சொல்லி யாருமே அந்த முயற்சியே சில நேரங்களில் கைப்பட்டு போயிடுவாங்க நான் சொல்ற விஷயம் என்னன்னா நம்ம நம்ம இதை படிக்கணும் என்று வாரம் அதை படிக்கிறோம் ஆனா இத பயிர்கின்றதுனால இது அடுத்த கட்டம் எப்படி நடக்க போகுதுன்னா நம்முடைய தொடர்ச்சியான திறன்களை நம்ம விருத்தி அடைய செய்வதன் காரணமாக மட்டும்தான் நாம் ரசனையை முந்தலாம் நம்முடைய ரசனையை நாம் திறன்களால் முந்துகின்ற போது உங்களால் உங்கள் எண்ணங்களில் தோன்றுகின்ற எல்லாவற்றையும் அப்படியே உருவாக்க முடியும் அப்படிங்கிற விஷயத்தை தான் இந்த வரை தான் சொல்லிட்டாங்க இப்போ தமிழ் லெக்சரிங் வருங்காலத்துல எது நோக்கத்தோடு பார்ப்பாங்க இல்ல எப்படி பயன்படுத்துவாங்க அப்படின்னு நீங்க நினைக்கிறீங்க uh uh in in the context of uh, tamil lettering for the future let's say i really wanted to have it something like you know 
uh, say for for example if somebody coming from a different country uh, the, like a multinational company or something like that they're coming to india right or singapore where they have these Tamil language in place so what they have to do is i believe it, it's actually happening right now so i wanted to make their brand as local as as it seems to be like let's say if there's a big brand is coming and they want to have their own branding language being converted into Tamil, which I really believe in. I always uh, and uh, I, I that's what I really think. It it kind of give a lot of exposure for Tamil uh, in terms of type design as well as logo and everything. So, very not different than do another. Illa nila kinu do. Or for example, what about this logo? There is another. And the logo of Tamilala mudima apniyeng ro na periyoru oru and the. ஒரு தமிழான ஒரு லோகோவை நாங்க பரிச்சயமான ஒரு ஆங்கில லோகோ பார்த்த நிலையில இருந்து பார்க்கக்குள்ள ஒரு வகையான ஒரு நம்முடைய ஒரு உணர்ச்சி ஒன்று இருக்கு இல்லையா அதோட இணைந்து கொள்ற அந்த ஹர்மோன் அதனால பிசினஸ் வில் ஆக்சுவலி கோய் டு ரிட்டைன் தட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் எனர்ஜி ஃப்ரம் த பீப்புள் அட் சே ஆ வி ஆர் டு ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் தி லோகோ இன் தமிழ் so that we can capture the the tamil market in such so that's what i'm looking for and it's actually happening so i hope that they actually expand it in in future yeah so uh what advice do you want to give uh for upcoming artists who are interested in lettering calligraphy ah uh, yeah so <clears throat> it's uh, as i already said that uh there are three things i always emphasize that is learn practice and show your work learn means learn everything whatever it comes in everywhere the learning is there everything like let's say for example if you want to create uh, like letter thana right if you look at the structure of a building or even a chair or maybe a door there are a lot of patterns in it right so you can replicate that into that letter and make something out of it and that's where you learn and also talk to people and to like uh, look at other artists works you know don't copy but imitate you know imitate in the sense learn learn from the things like how they uh, connect the colors together how do they connect these shapes together and what are they do so that kind of thing the learning and the practice means there's no nothing else is been replaced by the practice you know <clears throat> I I always love I really love this uh, Latin phrase called the uh, kendo discimus which means you only learn by teaching so so let's say if you have learned something you have to teach means you are not it's not just about the telling everyone but about creating it you know you are actually teaching something by creating it right so it's actually creating and showing the process to the world so you learn something and we practice means train create something and not not just by creating it's not going to happen anything because if you are creating something in vacuum nobody going uh, going to understand you or even know you right so what you need to do is you have to show your work so start posting some people there are perfect perfectionist mindset people there they is always looking for the right time the right perfect thing the perfection is never existed in the world right who is perfect what is the what is the definition of perfect right so everyone should be get into the production mindset not the perfection mindset right so they have to produce things and share it in the world so learn about things create and practice about it and share with the world and the why product will happen and you will you'll be amazed and you'll be actually unstoppable you know you know when you create something and you put it out on the internet the content itself you know the artwork or whatever the 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 the, the creation that you have made is actually working for you around the clock even though you're sleeping it actually be there and people are liking it and people are sharing it and if they they can even inquire you or say oh we want to make this kind of artwork for us so it's actually working for you so there's a leverage for that right so making content it's a very interesting thing so don't wait until it happens start right now there is a code that always uh, refer that let's say 
the, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years, 20 years ago and the, the next time is right now. So start doing something and share the world and everything will be all right and you, you, will, you will go places, yeah. Yes, uh, yes but this is a very, very true point, sir. So, uh, final question. So, uh, so you have taken up various art challenges, sir, in your Instagram page. And uh, how do you uh, deal with art block? Like, uh, three, if there is a 365 day challenge, uh, we have to be consistent, yeah. like how you mentioned. But sometimes we do get art blocks. How do you deal with it, sir? Yeah, you know, as, as I always said that this. There's the, the, the we call that creative block, art block, and a lot of things, right? There, I mentioned that. But I think if you have a system, no, no blocks can make interfere with it, right? The system, it's mean like, you know, the, the, right now we are living in a world of distraction. You can't find. You have to find the signal from the noise. So what do you do that? Like, let's say if you take the form, you will end up uh, spending two hours unknowingly right but let's say if you take the form intentionally and doing something and you will be doing that for five minutes and that's it done so having that kind of uh, mechanism system it's in the place it's very important so for me i always uh, having uh, having a system like say i take notes every single thing like let's say if i looking at something and say oh maybe this can be something that i can incorporate or if I listening to a song, this that line, oh, this line is very fantastic. So I just jot it down uh, on, on the thing. So I I, I use a, a, a app called Obsidian, which you can actually uh, create. So I I always even uh, tell people about this one to create a second brain. So you collect everything there. Don't worry about you. You are not collecting just to uh, not to store but to create. So I never copy things from a story in my notes. I not, I never take notes, I make notes. Which means if I say, go and looking at something and say, oh, maybe this is a good thing. So I interpret in my own language there. So it's actually my version of it, right? So the, my perception about it. So I'm making a note. From that, when I wanted to create something, there are a plethora of ideas that I can explore right now. So I have right now, there are a lot of things which I... Uh, so because of that practice, the system, I don't have any uh, creative block or whatever, the, the, the art block or something. So I always uh, uh, like advocate people to have a system, say, let's say, for having a, let's say, for example, in five years, I want to be like this. It's a kind of a goal, right? How can you get into the goal? You can't get into the goal without a system. You don't really have to have a goal itself. You have to have a system. So a system in the sense, okay, in five years means for a one day, what should I do? The small thing, small chunks, right? So focus on that small one step per day and that's going to happen in the future. The, there is this thing from James Clear, there's a book called Atomic Habits. It says, if you can improve 1% of us every single day, you will be able to gain 37.8% of uh, uh, growth or development in your life in one year, short span of time. This is very phenomenal, right? But if you're not doing anything, you'll remain the same. So that's the important thing. Think about one percentage better every day. And that, how do you do that? Having a system. Having a system means to having, okay, let's say, I want to post one post, it's a kind of a vague one. I want to create this amount of time to do this and to, to create a post. There is another thing called a Parkinson's law, which says, if you if you are work, you are doing some work if you let's say you want to do a work in within a day so you'll you'll wait until the day finishes then only you start to do that let's say if you are giving 15 minutes to do a work you will be finishing it within the 15 minutes itself so the the work will expand 
as per to the time you allocated so allocate a time to practice let's say 50 minutes do that that's it and every single day you do that do that when you do that the system becomes a habit habit makes you who you want to be and the in the short span of time you will be able to achieve your goals uh, without without no more any effort because you are already having a system right you are you are getting there so that, that's how you have to determine you have to challenge the art block right art block couldn't get into the way right yeah yes yes sir. so final one sir uh, what do you think about this initiative by ikindi times about this artist series uh, yeah that's very interesting uh, and also a very useful uh, initiative because uh, you know when when you having a set of artists sharing their journey as well as how do they work and also what are the things that they learn from their so far and people who are really uh, wanted to get into this uh, uh, thing they be able to get a lot of knowledge from them right so it's a good idea and also making sure that uh, oh, having these knowledge is accessible to everyone so the good thing and also uh, even though the people who uh, i think you are being into, into architecture feel but again uh, the art is all about it's in in everyone life right it's art is everywhere so if you uh, can incorporate that art or maybe you can incorporate that kind of uh, studies right into your life you can get into the thing so let's say if i talking about the goal setting and the system and everything it actually can happen to you not for the art for entire life right so it can help all the uh, the as as uh, like the budding artists and sort of people who actually really want to uh, make a difference in their uh, society and things like that yeah so thank you very much for the uh, like initiating this kind of very useful initiative for for the kindy times yeah Thank you, sir. We have reached the end of our interview. It was uh, really interesting, and I'm sure uh, everyone who's watching this video will be motivated. And I'm personally really motivated and inspired by this talk with you. And thank you so much for your time and wishing that you reach even more greater heights and inspire all of us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Sudarshana, for having me on this show and also uh, the union opportunity to share my views and also the journey and also I hope uh, these kind of things uh, that can uh, inspire people. I really wanted to inspire a generation so that people can do this uh, art and carry this forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.